Hey, announcer guy here for Sean and Kevin, world travelers who occasionally go to places you haven't been. In this episode, the boys are in Canada. So settle in and welcome to Travel by Numbers. Pretty amazing. I uh, took down some stats. So the size of the pit is 2,800 feet long. It's 1,500 feet wide, and it covers 75 acres. And the depth of this pit is 550 feet. Four years before the defeat of Germany in World War II, the Canadian government joined with the American-based Bethlehem Steel Corporation to explore the mineral riches of the Marmora region here in Ontario, Canada. In 500 meters, turn right onto Marmora Mine Road. Turn right onto Marmora Mine Road. With large iron ore losses at sea, thanks to German submarines, and the fact that iron was necessary for the manufacture of war weapons, they joined forces in an endeavor to combine and upgrade technical knowledge and finance the search for iron deposits. Six years passed before experimental drilling was ordered, revealing the presence of a huge iron ore body resting about 1.6 kilometers east of the village of Marmora the little community hit the headlines across North America. The ore was lying under a deep overlay cap of limestone that was estimated to be about 30.5 meters thick. Engineers concluded that an open pit would be far less dangerous and cheaper to maintain than underground shafts, which would have to be constantly monitored in the interest of safety. On the east side of what was to become known as the Marmoratan Mine, a new plant was to be constructed for the purpose of converting the raw ore into small pellets of pure iron. Easier to handle and being lighter in weight, it would speed the rail loading process. Tracks were laid to the mine site from where ore was to be carried to the larger railroads and the first pit cut was begun in 1951. The following year, Leslie Frost, the Premier of Ontario, attended the official opening of the mine. He raised a red flag to signal the lighting of 5,000 pounds of dynamite, and the detonation was audible for 48 kilometers in every direction. In the second year of operation, directors of the steel company, in conjunction with the Canadian government, decided to build a special shipping dock at Picton Bay, an arm of the Bay of Quinte on Lake Ontario. Bethlehem Steel Corporation was given the highly coveted mineral rights extension from the government and in less than three years was running at full capacity. At the peak of production, the Marmorton mine yielded half a million tons of rich pelletized iron. positive, forward-looking consensus around Marmora was that the new mine would continue to operate for a minimum of 50 years. However, in the late 1970s, work slowed to a tiny trickle. This was due to a sluggish economy, runaway inflation, and a precipitous slide in world demand for steel. Altogether, the mine remained operational for a period of 27 years, a long time comparatively. In March of 1978, closure was finalized, taking with it untold jobs, both in the mine and on the Picton loading dock. More than half of the carrier ships were removed from service immediately. 300 jobs with a $2 million payroll disappeared within 60 days and 22 years of provincial grants also came to an abrupt halt. If 
If you enjoyed today's episode, please click the like button. And by subscribing and turning notifications on, you'll help us create new content. Thanks for watching. And remember, experiences, not things.